I think, as you know, um, this has been a long process. It's not been an easy, it's been a long process. Originally, Bob Collymore uh, announced that he would be stepping down this year, and we went through a process of, of finding his, uh, his, uh, his replacement. We didn't find the right candidate, and Bob agreed to stay for another year. Unfortunately, Bob uh, died before he could stay for another year, so we went back to the selection process. And our mandate was very clear. We wanted to find the best candidate for the job, and preferably we wanted a Kenyan to be the, the best, the Kenyan to be the next CEO of Safaricom. And, you know, this is not an ordinary company. You know, Safaricom is part of every phase of, of life in Kenya. It's part of the fabric of society of, of Kenya. So it's not like hiring a CEO for a garage or a pharmacy or, a, you know, Duca or something like that. This is a big company and it's an important company. It plays a role in lots of elements of society and not and in government and so on. So it, we had to make sure we had the right person for the job. And that's basically, you know, where we found Peter and Degwe to be the right, the most qualified person to be the next CEO of Safaricom. Peter appears to have a very decorated resume. Perhaps if you could tell us what is it in his resume that really hard the board pick him? Look, I can't say too much because it's obviously a confidential process and I don't want to give away things because someone will challenge us at some point. But I mean, it, it, he has a necessary experience of running a big corporate. Uh, he's had experience of running uh, Diageo in, in Ghana, in Nigeria. He's mature. He's, Diageo is a big company. It's uh, a multinational, of course, which is, you know, to some extent we are. And I think he's also had experience of working in outside, in, outside of Kenya. He's originally a trained accountant from PwC, worked here for East African breweries, went on to Diageo. I think he has the right qualifications. The, 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 to some extent, people will say, well, he's not a telecom guy. You know, Bob was a telecom guy, I was a telecom guy. Um, but that's the, you know, one of the reasons why it's, it's, uh, I will probably, I will be here, I will stay on to help him mentor him. Um, but you know, that's uh, the only thing that I would say is, is, is not perfect, but otherwise I think the right candidate for us. All right, you say it's the right candidate. Was this the unanimous decision of the board to settle on Peter Ndegwa? I can't tell you that. I mean, it's confidential. Board matters are confidential, but it was, a, the, it was the board's choice. You know? I, I think every decision of Safaricom's board in the last 19 years has been unanimous. Perhaps a confidential matter, but there has been a lot of talk, so much that there was said to have been some sort of a disagreement in a meeting that had been called that saw some of the members need to convene later at around 3 a.m., at least by media reports. Perhaps what was the subject of this discussion? Look, I, once again, this is confidential, but there's been no disagreement of that nature at all. That the board has had, first of all, the, the process is very, uh, is, very, is very careful and very formal. We hired a headhunter, headhunter chose, uh, you know, gave us a selection or a, a list of candidates, potential candidates. The nomination committee of the board, which is a subcommittee of the board, went through all these. We chose a, a number of candidates to interview. We interviewed them, we ranked them, we sent them for evaluation. There was no such disagreement amongst the board or the nomination committee of the board at all. Even after the announcement, of course, uh, Kenyans took to social media perhaps to share the you know, feedback on this matter. Some even questioned why did you settle on a Kenyan, yet there was concern that maybe they would be susceptible to interference, political or otherwise. Look, this is always going to be the case. And of course, many people talk, and unfortunately for me, and also I think it's unfortunate for, the, for Kenya, that we always look at the, the, the tribal affiliation of, of, of somebody to say whether he will be influenced politically or not influenced. I think this is a very unfortunate tr uh, trademark or mark of, of, of Kenyans and Kenyans in, in general. Look, I think that will not happen in any case. I think it's time for, as a Kenyan company to have a Kenyan CEO. Um, it's unfortunate we didn't choose somebody internally at this point. It will come, I'm pretty sure. Um, so I think I don't believe in that stuff. I mean, you, you know, I think the candidate which has got the, the necessary integrity, uh, maturity to, to, to do the right thing for Safaricom, number one, uh, the right thing for its shareholders, number two, and the right thing for Kenya. At some point when you're taking over a bit of power at the Kenya Airways, you did say that you did not feel that Kenya was ready to have that kind of a CEO, at least a Kenyan CEO, they needed a foreigner. What, why the change of heart? 
I think we had to reconsider because, you know, this is, we have to think about the future of this company and what kind of company we are. And I think it's necessary to, you know, we could have gone on and have an expat CEO forever, okay? We could go on like this forever if we want to, but I think it's the right move politically and, and, and politically and professionally, it's the right move to have a Kenyan as the head of this company. And I, you know, as I say, it, it, the problem, the challenge that we had, and I have to say this, the challenge that we had is to find a Kenyan with all the necessary qualifications and experience in our field to run this company. So where is that Kenyan? You know, you, I ask you, where is that Kenyan? It's very difficult. The pool is not large. You know, probably no more than, uh, you know, count on one hand possibly. So, you know, we had to then expand it and say, okay, if we want a Kenyan, perhaps we have to widen the search and not choose somebody with mobile experience or telecom experience. And that's what we have done. All right then, seeing that you have already now settled on him and of course he's going to be joining you starting uh, April. What are your expectations of him as the new CEO and you even as the founding CEO? Look, I think it's the same when Bob was appointed. You know, when Bob was appointed, it was a two-year process. There was lots of deliberation whether Bob could do the job. He also didn't have all the necessary qualifications to be CEO. You know, one of the downsides of Bob, he'd never run a big corporation, you know. So it took two years to find him. Bob came in. Bob grew into the job, wonderfully grew into the job, and, and, and really took the company to, a, to another level. I expect Peter would do the same. It'll take him some time to settle, take him some time to understand the DNA of the company, what makes us tick, because it's not just selling voice and data and SMS. It's not what Safaricom is all about. We are financial services. We have huge CSR programs. Uh, we're involved in every fabric of society of, of Kenya. So it will take him some time to settle in. My expectation of him, it will probably take him three to six months to really settle in. I will be here to guide him, to help him. And you know, people know me, I'm not an easy person, so I expect him to deliver. We have seen a bit of a rebranding, so to call it, from Safaricom. What do you expect Peter to focus on in growing Safaricom? I think he first get to understand the company, of course, and then I need to focus, take in on what you've decided to do what we, the, what we launched yesterday is to continue to take that forward, focus on, on, on the customer experience, giving the customer the experience that I believe they deserve, focus on our financial performance, focus on our financial services, where we'll go with that. I think all those things. All right. And of course, we wish you could expound further on what your product really was when you said non-expiry and what more products do we expect even under the new leadership? Look, I think what we announced yesterday was that we announced voice and data, basically voice and data, you can buy what you, can, what you want to buy, how much you want to spend, and it doesn't expire. Fundamentally, that's it. Second part of it is we want to change the way we deal with, we provide service to you, to our, to you and to our customers. So if you go into our shops today, our Safaricom shops today, you'll have a different experience. I hope you'll appreciate it, it'd be different. Call our customer service, you will have a different experience as well. Across all of Safaricom, we want to change that. Now, I expect this to continue. In, 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 in January, we will launch uh, more 4G services, or we'll, we'll, we, we will intend to announce that we'll have 4G everywhere in, in Kenya, and we'll provide more 4G um, uh, phones, uh, so feature phones and smartphones. In April, May, uh, sort of April, we will launch new services on, on M-Pesa, new financial services. So this is a continuous process. I forgot one thing, postpaid, we'll probably launch a new postpaid product in November. So we will continue to do this, but what I want to do is to focus on providing you know, the, the right services which are honest, simple and, and clear to our customers. And thank you so much. Of course, we've been speaking to the founding CEO of Safaricom Limited, and he's a Kenyan businessman who's been at the heart of development of various corporate sections. And he continues to show optimism in the growth of various places or sectors in Kenya. I am Rose Gekwo. Good evening.